Alpha. What's up guys and welcome back to the Sony Alpha Universe for another exciting webinar hosted by myself, Mike Eloff. I'm excited because this is the very first of a four part webinar series on this vlog. Right, without further ado, let's get into the very first webinar of this four part series, the basics of blogging. So let me tell you a little bit more about how I actually got into blogging and, and how it all came about for me and I don't know, pretty much for the industry as well. Um, so if I go back to around about 2015, 16, around about there where I started really getting a little bit more into video, I decided I wanted to document my life a little bit better. I'd seen some of the bloggers out there like Mr. Ben Brown or Casey Neistat and they're all documenting their lives, doing it on a daily basis. So I decided that I wanted to try and do this myself. Let me tell you something. If you want to be a daily blogger, you really, really, really have to commit because it is a lot of work. So I tried to do it for about three months and that was not for me. So for now, I just love to vlog when I go on trips and it's incredible. It's a great way of documenting my trip, documenting what we're getting up to and just having a lot of fun while we're doing it as well. And then putting it out into the internet as well. Not everybody gets to travel around the world like I do. So it's really nice to be able to showcase different parts of the world, different things that we get up to, you know, different cool hotels that we're staying in as well, all in a vlogging format and putting it out there onto the internet for other people to see and to experience themselves. Man, I'm excited to go into this because vlogging is something that I really, really enjoy. When Colin and I are traveling around the world and checking out different places, it's really epic to be able to just document it by holding a camera in front of me, talking to the camera, telling people what's going on around me, and then putting some epic cinematic sequences in behind that. But vlogging isn't just about that. There's a lot more that goes into it. And when I first got into vlogging, it was intimidating, it was daunting. I didn't know where to start. I didn't know how to look into the camera. So what did I do first? I went into YouTube and on YouTube how to blog. Now you guys don't have to do that because we've got a four part webinar series coming up where you're gonna learn everything from the basics to filming to editing as well as making money. I found a couple of guys that are putting out daily blogs and they were just putting out such great epic travel type content with really cool cinematic sequences in between that and I was like, poof, what a great way of putting your own TV show together really and putting it up onto the internet. So. I thought I really wanted to try and do this myself because it's a great way of getting people to invest in your life to come back to see what are you getting up to tomorrow? What are you getting up to next week? What are you doing on a trip? It's a really, really cool way of also documenting our trips. So when we go travel around and we're actually working for a tourism board and one of the deliverables is put out a video or a vlog, it's a great way of actually just going out there and saying, well, here I am in Sri Lanka and check out this cool market behind me. You know, you're telling people about the scene, you're telling them everything that's going on, you're giving them some history and then you're showing them some visuals as well, keeping them hooked and locked into that vlog at all specific times. So let's talk about your intentions with vlogging before we go any further because I think it's really important to distinguish whether you're going to be vlogging for fun or whether you want to vlog to make money. I know that this is where a lot of you guys are actually heading because a lot of people want to make money online. Now that was definitely my intention. I wanted to take what I was doing and put it together to start making money. Now it's not all as easy as one, two, three where you're just going to start make, making money. It's, there's a whole bunch more that goes into it. There's a whole bunch of stuff where you're contacting brands, uh, you also need to know how to film, you also need to know how to edit, and we'll cover all of that stuff in future webinars coming up. But for now, let's just focus on the basics. So before we get into vlogging itself, let's talk about your intentions for vlogging and the type of vlog that you wanna upload and why you wanna upload it. Do you wanna put together a video that you maybe filmed over a weekend, like a camping trip with your buddies at summertime, you're all swimming, having fun, you're filming a bunch of stuff, Put it together on a quick little edit and you upload it to Facebook. Everybody loves it, they share it with their friends, it's a good laugh and you kind of move on and wait for the next awesome trip with your buddies to come up. Or do you want to take it to the next level and make money from your vlog by pumping out something really, really beautiful, cool vlog, lots of information, cool cinematic sequences, something that if a brand picks up on it, will go, oh, let's get that guy to come on board with us and maybe he can do a vlog for us. I know that's exactly why I wanted to get into blogging because I wanted to make money from it. I wanted brands to pick up on some of the stuff that I was doing and it's definitely worked because I've traveled around the world, experienced different things, seen different places and have been asked to do blogs by brands, by tourism boards and it's just been such a great way of making some extra income, especially as a freelancer. When I first started blogging, there was a whole bunch of challenges that I was running into. First off, how is it possible to stand and talk to a camera 
and not feel uncomfortable, especially if you've got like a thousand other people watching you. That was probably one of the most difficult things for me at least to get over. And I know it's the same for a lot of people. It's uncomfortable to stand there and hold the camera and actually look at it and focus right into the actual lens itself. But once you move past that, I promise you vlogging becomes a lot easier. And one way that you can get past it is by doing what I was doing. I would stand in front of the mirror and look myself dead in the eyes because that is what you want. You want eye contact. You don't want to be looking around, you don't want to be looking at the screen, you want to be looking directly into the actual camera. So if you're standing in front of the mirror and you're looking at yourself dead in the eyes and you're practicing what you're getting up to, eventually you become more comfortable with talking to yourself. Another one of my own personal challenges was what was I going to vlog about? I have so many things that I want to vlog about. I want to vlog about running. I want to vlog about mountains. I want to vlog about travel. I want to vlog about my life. I want to vlog about my food. But really, you just need to keep it nice and focused. Especially if you're going to be focusing on a very specific genre of vlogging. Now, there's lots of genres out there of vlogging. You can be a food vlogger. You can be a gaming vlogger. You can be a travel and adventure vlogger like I am. You can even be a surfing vlogger or a farming vlogger. There is just so many types of vloggers out there. The ideas out there are just limitless in terms of what you can actually produce and put up into the internet. And I promise you, there's always going to be somebody that is willing to watch your vlog as well. Especially if you pump it out in the right cup of way. Uh, another one of my own personal challenges was gear. What gear was I going to use? Obviously, I didn't have the best gear. My cameras weren't really fantastic. But I had a camera. And if I didn't have a camera, I had a cell phone as well. And I, and I always say to people that the best camera is the one that you have on hand with you. And that most of the time is a cell phone. Now, I'm not saying that you should be vlogging with cell phones because if you're maybe going to be doing a vlog with you and your buddies away for the weekend, that's cool. Use the cell phone. But if you're going to be doing it for a brand, and especially if a brand is going to be paying you, I think it's very important to use good gear or at least entry-level gear that looks professional. Colin and I, we're lucky that we are Sony ambassadors and we get a whole bunch of gear at our fingertips when we need it. So when we traveled around Sri Lanka, I was using the brand new RX100 Mark 7. It was flipping amazing, just so quick and easy to just pull out of my pocket and shoot whenever I wanted to and then just put it back again. I couldn't always just grab out the A7R3. I mean, I had two A7R3s in that trip and I, I couldn't pull out both of them quick enough. It was always that RX100 Mark 7 and there we were and we were blocked. Another trip where I did a whole bunch of vlogging was when we went to Egypt. I had the Sony A6400 and man, what a great vlogging camera. In fact, this is probably my favorite setup of all time. This is the Sony A6400 and oh man, it is just so nice to be able to hold it out. I've got it on the hand grip over here. You can easily control the camera as well using all the buttons over here. And it's just such a fantastic camera to vlog with. There are some new vlogging cameras. In fact, Sony has just launched the new ZV-1 and wow. If you're a vlogger, then you better be excited because this is probably the best vlogging camera that has entered into the market right now. And it is at a super affordable price as well. I don't have my hands on one yet. I've still got my A6400. So for now, we'll just focus on these little cameras. Some of the challenges that you may face is I don't have the best editing software out there. I don't have money to pay for Adobe Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro or something like that. Don't worry because there are free editing softwares out there and I'll cover that in the third webinar where we're going to be covering editing. We'll talk all about what software to use, what software I use and the types of free software out there as well if you're getting into blogging. And I suppose the last challenge that I was faced with was how was I going to take this blog and start making money from it? How was I going to get people to really see what was going on? How were people going to watch my blog, enjoy it and share it with their friends? These are all things that were happening inside my head. And that's another topic we'll be covering in the fourth episode of this webinar, where we're going to be talking about how you can make money. So with all of the challenges out of the way, let's focus on the biggest question for today, which is how do I start a blog? One of the first things that you're going to need to do when starting a blog is you're going to need to come up with your subject. What are you going to be talking about? What is your genre? Are you gaming? Are you travel? Are you lifestyle? Are you makeup? There are so many different types of blogs out there. You need to pick the one that you are good at. Now, if you are a makeup vlogger and you want to start talking about rugby, don't go down that road if you know nothing about rugby because people will see it straight away in your vlog. If you don't know what you're talking about, people will instantly click next to the next video, to the next vlog. They won't come back to you, they won't subscribe, they won't like that video, they're gone for forever. So the second thing that I want to talk about is how to actually deliver your content. And what do I mean by that? I mean, how are people going to watch it? Is it going to be you walking around and, and holding the camera in front of you and talking about stuff that's happening behind you if you're traveling? 
or are you gonna be sitting at a desk talking about games if you're a gaming blogger, or if you're a comedian, are you gonna have funny gifs and stuff coming onto the screen, you know? One of those pow, if you've watched those Korean and Chinese vlogs, there's lots of this like pow, kaping stuff happening up on the screen. It's gonna be like one of those fun vlogs. Figure out how you're gonna be delivering your vlogs and definitely stick with that through every single episode of your vlog as well. That way, people will come back over and over again to see that specific stuff. When I first started getting into YouTube videos back in the day, I was living in Malta and I came across a guy by the name of Ray William Johnson and he was just doing something pretty simple. He was sitting in front of his camera, he had set up a nice background behind him with a whole bunch of comics type stuff which gave it like a cool like, wow cool, this, this seems fun. And he was doing a review on three comedy videos a day. They were hilarious. I used to sit and cry from laughter. It was just so funny the way that he was doing it. He would talk to the camera, go to the clip, first clip, talk in the background about what's going on, cut to himself, doing all these crazy things, lots of that pow, kaping, kang, all of that stuff happening on the screen, and I loved it. After every episode, I could not wait for the next episode. He would upload them religiously on a Tuesday and a Thursday at a specific time, and people were just sitting over there waiting and frothing to say, first, first, first. You've all had that. I'm sure you've all seen it on YouTube. Everyone loves to be the first person to comment on a video that has been uploaded by some famous YouTuber. <laughs> I know I've done it before as well. So just make sure that when you're delivering your content that it's delivered in a really epic way that people will enjoy, people will love and they'll come back for more every single time. So the third thing I want to talk about when starting a blog is obviously the quality of the content. When we first started blogging we didn't have access to all of this epic Sony gear that we're currently using. We had access to an action camera uh, and some old cameras that we had had for quite a few years. The cameras that I use when I go vlogging is an A6400 or an RX100 Mark 6 or Mark 7. It just depends on where I'm going to be going and what circumstances I'm going to be in. In fact, when we were in Egypt recently, there was a time when we had the permit and there was this guy walking with these cameras across from us. Now, if you even look at those guys that take photos of them, they want money from you. So I was trying to be as sneaky as possible. And what's nice about the RX100 Mark 6 that I had with me is that I can zoom in from 24 mils all the way out to 200 mils and I can get that guy from far away. And I was just looking down at the little screen that I flipped up and I was able to film him without him even realizing that I was doing it. Now, I'm not saying you should go out there and film people without them knowing because that is not cool. Because that is not cool. <laughs> but in a situation like that, where I didn't want to have to pay this guy for filming a short clip of him walking with these camels with the pyramids in the background, I thought it was perfect. When people come to your vlog and they see very shaky footage or blurry footage, they're just going to click to the next video. So it is important that the quality of the content that you're actually uploading onto your vlog is of a high standard. The fourth thing I'm going to talk about is kind of just taking a step back and going back to the challenges again. So vlogging can be challenging. It can only be challenging if you let your head tell you that it's challenging. So if you think things are challenging and you're feeling like you don't know what's going on, your head is spinning, take a step back and don't overthink it. I've done that so many times before. I've overthought of where am I going to stand to vlog, what am I going to say, all of these things. And when you start overthinking it, then you're going to be starting to talk about things that doesn't make any sense. And people that are watching your vlog are going to go like, next, you just lost a video. So, Really focus on what you're saying and be confident in what you're saying. So the fifth thing I'm going to be talking about is the different types of platforms that you can upload your blogs to. Now there's so many different types of platforms that you can upload to and so many different ways that you can portray your blogs as well. So say for instance, you're going to be uploading onto Instagram. Instagram's got vertical format. Now if you're going to be uploading vertical blogs, that's all cool and you can actually upload those onto IGTV. But IGTV also has the ability to upload a landscape video and there's a way of you can basically just add in a little gift that says for people to turn their phones because you know when you're watching on your phone it's nice you want to fill up the whole real estate but if you want to put out a blog and it's nice why and it's from something that you've done like you've gone traveling like i've traveled to sri lanka or something like that i don't want to film my whole sri lanka video as a vertical video i want to film it as wide and when i upload it i want it to be wide as well so add in a little gift tells people to flip the camera and that way they can actually watch it on their phones like that because Instagram is obviously a mobile platform. Another platform that you can upload it to, which is great because it's desktop as well, is Facebook. Facebook is perfect and it's a really, really great engaging audience for the stuff that I do. So a lot of my travel, a lot of my lifestyle stuff, I upload onto my Facebook page and people love it. But obviously Instagram is my biggest platform, so I'll upload a lot of my content to Instagram. 
So those are my two personal platforms that I like to upload to. Personally, I don't actually upload to YouTube, but thousands and millions and gazillions of people rely on YouTube, not just because it's a great platform to upload to, it's one of the first that are out there, but because you can actually monetize your blogs over there as well. Now, because a lot of the content that I'm producing is for brands and I'm getting paid from another way, I don't really need to rely on the monetization from AdSense or things like that. Uh, I rely on the payment coming in from clients themselves. However, if I wanted to upload those blogs onto YouTube and really pump out my SEO and really put out the description nicely, then there is ways to go into doing it. But I'll be focusing on all of that stuff in the last webinar, which is how to make money through your blog. But I'll be focusing on all of that stuff in my fourth webinar, which actually brings me to my sixth point on how you can actually make money from blogging. Because there are so many different ways that you can make money. You can make money through doing campaigns with brands, you can make money as an influencer, you can make money as a content creator, so creating the actual content for the brands themselves, or you can make money through AdSense and things like that, which I've just covered. There's just so many ways that you can actually make money, and I will focus on all of that stuff in the final webinar. All right, guys, with that said, we are running out of time, so let's just do a quick recap on what I've covered in today's first webinar on how to start a blog. So the first thing was content selection. Make sure that if you're gonna be a food blogger, you're vlogging about food. You're vlogging about stuff that you know everything about. Don't try and be a gaming blogger if you're a food blogger, basically is what I'm saying. The second thing was how to actually deliver the content. So are you gonna be out in the field holding the camera in front of you, talking about what's happening, travel lifestyle type stuff, or are you gonna be a gaming blogger? Are you gonna be sitting in front of your desk, showing people how to play games, tutorials, things like that? The third thing that we spoke about today was the quality of the content. So when you're uploading your blogs, make sure that the quality of the content is great so that people want to stay and watch that video right to the end. The fourth thing covered was the challenges. There's loads and loads of challenges out there when it comes to blogging and hopefully I have helped you overcome a couple of those challenges just in today's video and after the entire webinar series is complete, I would have hopefully taken all those challenges and put them to the side and you will be a professional blogger. The fifth thing we spoke about was what platform to upload to. So are you going to be uploading to Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, wherever you may be. Make sure that you pick the platform that you want to be uploading to and stick with it. And then the sixth and final thing we spoke about was how to make money from your blog, which we'll be going into way more detail in the fourth and final webinar in this series. All right, guys, that is it for me for today. Thank you very much for tuning in to watch the first of this four-part series. I hope that you come back for the other three webinars coming up in the series. And I also hope that you go check out all of the other videos that are on the Alpha Universe, where you've got great webinars teaching you amazing things from wedding photography to commercial photography to how to use lights, all done by the other Sony Alpha ambassadors based in the Middle East and Africa. And if you haven't yet followed me, definitely go check me out. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as Life of Mike ZA. Before we go though, I'd like to tell you that you are entitled to 10% cash back at any store around the country by using my promo code, which is MikeBlog1. So if you'd like to go out there and actually purchase some vlogging gear, maybe the brand new ZV1, who knows, uh, then head out into the stores and use the promo code MikeBlog1 when purchasing any kind of Sony gear and you'll get 10% cash back. Right, so thank you very much for tuning into this webinar. Until next time guys, ciao ciao.